Well, praise the Lord. I am so blessed this morning. You know why? Because all the craziest things that you could possibly imagine have happened this morning. We've had spiritual warfare like you couldn't imagine. But I know that that means that God is doing something here. That's what that means. When you see spiritual warfare happening in your life, that means God's about to do something in your life. And I know, just like he did in first service, he's going to do a mighty work here, and he's going to speak to each and every heart. So prepare your heart to hear what he has to say, to listen and to apply it to your life, because that's the beauty of God's word, is when you apply it to your life, it actually changes your life for the better. He, t- he can take something that's so terrible and make it so amazing. Trust in him to do the things that only God can do. We're going to be talking about his truth today and how God is truth and that in him there is no deceit. That means that God cannot lie and he will not lie because it goes against his character. It goes against who he is. But you know who is a liar? The devil is a liar. In fact, it says he's been a liar from the very beginning. And his purpose for lying was so that he could murder people. He could kill people. That's what lies do. And so even from the very beginning with Adam and Eve, and telling them the half-truth that he told them, and saying, oh, if you eat from the knowledge of good and evil, you won't die. But instead, you'll become like God. When God told them specifically, You don't eat from that tree. But you see, Adam and Eve trusted the devil more than they trusted God. And they went after the desires of their own heart. And they traded the truth of God for a lie. And in the same way, the enemy is trying to murder us even today. That we would trade the truth of God for the lies of the world that he could drag us down to the pit of hell with him. He's going there. And he wants the whole world to go with him, especially the people who were created in God's image. So instead, God gives you the truth. And the truth, when applied to your life, can save you from hell. And it can give you eternity with God forever. Paul says this, In Titus, verse 1, God, would you just kill that fly? He's been flying around me all day. That would be so nice, God. Yeah, get him. By the power of Jacob. I don't think you got him. Yeah. Titus 1, verse 1 says Paul. Verse 1 says, Paul, a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledgement of the truth, which accords with godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began, but has in due time manifested his word through preaching, which was committed to me according to the commandment of God our Savior, to Titus, a true son in the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. God, thank you so much for your word. Thank you that it is truth. And God, would you convince each one of our hearts of that today, right here in this time, that all the lies that we've believed as truth and all the walls that we've built up around that lie to protect it, all the chains that we've been in in slavery to that lie, would you break all of them down Would you break all of them off, God, that we can see you for who you really are and we can receive your truth for what it really is, the hope of our eternal salvation. God, would this time just be of you? Would it not be of me? Would it not be of the things of the world? Would it not be of any other man? But God, would you speak in your wisdom and in your power to each one of our hearts? Draw us out of the things of the world and into your glorious light. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. Now, I can't tell you how important 
of a message this is for Christians today. In our world, in our culture today, where we see lies being put out as if they're truth all over the place. And so much so that people are trading the truth for the lies. And then they're persecuting the truth to protect the lie. Because that's what happens, right? When you tell a lie to protect that lie and to keep the truth from coming out, you then persecute the truth so that the lie can maintain its order in your life. That's the same thing that happens. Whenever you tell a lie, whenever you receive a lie, that lie now has power over you. You're now enslaved to that lie. And to be enslaved to that lie is to push away and to persecute the truth. But I can tell you there's one thing and only one thing that you can do to get any lie out of your life. And that is to bring forth the truth. That is to call the lie what it is, a lie, and to not receive it as truth anymore and to receive the actual truth. Because God is truth. It tells us in him there's no deceit. He is the light. There is no darkness in him. And so we have to receive everything that he says as truth. He says this in 1 John 1, verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. When we walk in the truth of who God is, he cleanses us from all sin and all unrighteousness that we can walk with him in that truth. Look, the Bible, the holy word of God is all true. And you have to believe that it's all true. Because the problem is, is in our world today, People are taking certain parts of the Bible, of the truth of God, and they're saying, oh, I like this part. This part fits with my worldview. So I'll receive that as truth, but this other part that I don't like, that doesn't fit in what I believe to be true. No, I think God meant something else by that. That must be a lie or something. And so I'll just believe the things that I want to believe and not believe the things that are actually true and not believe the whole word of God. Look, you can't do that. The Bible is not a buffet. It's an all-inclusive resort. You know, once you're there, it's all-inclusive. You get it all. Tax-free. I don't know. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Ain't nothing tax-free in this country. But it's an all-inclusive resort. You get everything. The problem that we have in our world is not that the devil is a liar. The devil's always been a liar. He's always lied. The problem is that we've received some of the lies that the devil has told us as truth. That's the real issue. The devil has been a liar always from the beginning. Just like when he lied to Adam and Eve. He was a liar then, and he's still a liar now. But can I tell you that things would have been a lot different if Adam and Eve would have stood up to the devil and would have said, no, that's a lie. And God has told us the truth, and we're going to walk in the truth of God. But they didn't. But I can tell you that God has empowered you as Christians in his word that you can believe the whole truth of God. You can be empowered by his truth. And you can be empowered to say to the devil when he comes to tempt you, like he tempted Adam and Eve, to say, no, that's not true. That's a lie. And I'm not walking in the lie anymore. I'm walking in the truth 
that God has given me. That is the very thing that Jesus Christ paid for for you. Because what Paul is talking about in the scriptures here is the fact that if you believe that Jesus Christ is your savior and you have eternal life with him forever, then you have to believe the entirety of the rest of the scriptures. You can't take the salvation part, the part that you like, right? Oh, your get out of jail free card. You can't take that part and then get rid of all the other parts that you don't like. Because by getting rid of the other parts that you don't like, you're calling God a liar, number one. And if God is a liar and his word is not true, then how can you believe in him for your salvation? So if you don't believe one part, you can't believe all the rest of it. But if you believe it all, you have to believe it all. And you get it all. You get salvation along with everything else too. But if you take just one little piece of it out, you lose the whole thing. God's word is truth. You have to receive it as truth. God is not a liar. You may not like what he has to say, but he's saying it for your benefit. He's saying it because he knows it's the truth and he knows the world is going to try to lie to you and he wants to give you ground to stand on when the lie comes after you. You understand how that works? When the truth is present, when you stand on the solid rock of the truth, the lie now has no ground to stand on anymore because you know what the truth is. But if you don't know the truth, then the lie can come in and you can receive it as truth because you don't actually know the truth. You guys picking up what I'm putting down or did I talk too fast there? Okay. So you have to receive the truth so you know what the lie is. That's why God has given us his word. That's why Christians who don't read the word of God, it's very easy that you see them going off and doing all kinds of crazy things. And you're like, wait, they're calling themselves a Christian. Like when we saw what happened at the Olympic ceremony and there were Christians coming out saying evil things about those people. And you're like, wait, I thought you were a Christian. Christians don't do that. No, we stand on the truth. God tells us the two greatest commandments are to love him and to love your neighbor. Is that loving? No, it's not ever loving to make fun of another person. To tell them the truth in love, though, that is a loving thing to do. That's what we're called to as Christians, to be a witness and a testimony against the darkness of this world, to be a light, a city set on a hill that all the nations around would see us, would see our light, and they would be drawn to it. You ever notice how when you're in a dark room and then all of a sudden somebody shines a light, it's like you're immediately attracted to it. I know this because I'm, I don't know if I sleep with my eyes open or what, but I have to sleep in total darkness and my wife hates it because she'd rather have the lights on. But my problem is if it's not dark, I can't sleep. My, my eyes are attracted to the light. And she's like, just look away from it. I'm like, I can't. <laughs> it's like a train wreck. You don't want to see it, but you can't look away. It's the same thing. Your light so shines that even if people don't want to see it, they can't look away. This world is full of darkness. But God has called you to be a light. Jesus was talking to the Pharisees about this when he's talking to them about their heart and how out of the heart, their mouth speaks. And because their hearts are evil and they've desired the things of the world, they're actually children of the devil and not of God. He makes this distinction. He says, 
if you are a liar or you receive lies, you are a child of the father of lies, which is the devil. But if you speak truth and you know truth and you receive truth, then you're a child of your father, God, who is truth. So he says to them in John 8, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. That is the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Which of you convicts me of sin? And if I tell you the truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears God's words. That means they receive God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. He draws a line right there in the sand. And he says, if you're a liar and you believe the lie and you perpetuate the lie, you are a child of the father of lies. But those who are of our father God in heaven receive the truth and believe it and perpetuate truth because we're of our Father. Anyone who does not is not of the Father. The problem is not that lies are in the world. It's not that the devil is trying to empower lies. The problem is that the heart of man has perpetuated the lies and has not perpetuated truth. God desires that our hearts would be knit to him in truth, that we as Christians would tell the truth. But men's hearts are not for God. They're for themselves. They want to go after their own desires. And because they want to go after their own desires, their desires lead them into sin. And their sin leads them into lies or vice versa. Remember when you maybe we're like in high school and you wanted to do something that you knew was bad, but you were going to do it anyway. And as you were doing it, you realized you were probably going to get caught and you were going to have to come up with a story to plead your innocence, right? Like for me, that was like when the cops showed up, like when I was doing something bad and the cops showed up, I knew, okay, I'm going to have to have a story because I'm going to have to tell my parents here. So I start plotting in my head. What am I going to, what am I going to say to them? Hmm. And I, oh, I got it. But the problem that came up is that my story had a hole in it that I didn't realize beforehand. So as my parents were asking me questions about my story, they were cross-examining me. As they were asking me questions, I realized there's a hole in my story. And because there's a hole in my story, I now have to cover that hole with another lie. And as they're asking more questions, I'm realizing there's more and more holes in my story that I thought was like a piece of cheddar cheese now looks like Swiss cheese. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was solid, but it's not. And so I'm covering all those holes in my Swiss cheese story with another lie. So my one lie led to another lie that led to another lie, and it's just perpetuating the lie over and over again. And it becomes like, you know, those jugglers <laughs> in the circus, how they start with one ball, right? They come out on stage, they got one ball like this. They're just throwing it up in the air, and you're like, dude, this is boring, like move on. And then they got two, then three, and four, and five. And pretty soon, they get too many that they can't juggle them all. And all of them start hitting each other in midair. 
And then before it's all over, it all comes crashing down, right? That's like what a lie is. It starts with just one. And it's really simple and easy. You can just up and down, no problem. But pretty soon you got to cover that with another one and another one and another one and another one. And pretty soon you can't juggle them all. And the house of cards that you've built comes crashing down. The problem is in man's heart. Because if in that situation, if I would have just told the truth from the beginning, all the rest of it wouldn't have been an issue. I could have just said, hey, look, I knew it was wrong to do, but I wanted to do it anyway. You understand? We've all had that feeling, oh, I know this is wrong, but it would be fun. See, the desire of a man's heart is evil and desperately wicked. The Bible says, who could know it? You can't even know your own heart. It will lead you astray. And so the issue is not that the devil is tempting you. The issue is that your heart desires what he's tempting you with. James 1 says it like this in verse 14. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. His own desires. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. The wages of sin is death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, excuse me, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of what? Truth. He brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You know, I say this verse all the time. Every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning, okay? It's easy to say that. When you want something, like, oh, every gift comes from heaven. But when you see the context of what he's actually saying here, he's saying the truth that comes down from the Father of lights, the perfect gift is the word of God. It is the one thing that gets you out of all your own evil desires. So you have to come out of desiring those evil things and receive the perfect gift that God has given you as truth. And then things will change in your life. Then that truth can culminate and permeate through your whole body to where you're walking in it instead of in the lies, instead of in your own desires that are evil. He goes on to say this in chapter four. Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and do not have. You murder and covet and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. How many prosperity gospel preachers have used that verse? You have not because you ask not. You just need to ask for it. And I'm asking you for $1,000 right now, so make sure you send that in. But what is James actually saying here? He's saying your heart is evil and you ask for evil things so that you can do with it what you desire and not what God desires. And then you wonder why God doesn't give you what you ask for. No, when you're asking for something, 
your heart should be aligned with the will of God. Not so you could just spend it on yourself, but that, that you can give what he's given you to help others, to bless his kingdom. Because your life is about serving his kingdom, not about building, building your own. Serving God's kingdom, not about building your own. God's kingdom is the only kingdom that's going to last. If you want to build up a great kingdom just to watch it all fall at the end, go right ahead. But for me, I want to build a kingdom that lasts. He says, you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. He's saying, if you desire the things of the world, the things of your flesh, you're not aligned with God. You've made yourself an enemy of God. Because all sin, lies, and every other sin, does it not stem from our own selfishness? Just like James says, you desire, but you cannot have. So you murder. You sin because you have this desire in you that's unfulfilled, that's an ungodly desire, an evil desire, and yet you want it so bad that you're willing to give up everything for it. To even sin against the true and living God when you know that causes spiritual death. Sin can't cause anything else in you. It's good for a season, but it's out to kill you. It just wants to rope you in enough that it's super hard to get out once you want to. It's a trap. It's a trap of the enemy. John 3, verse 19 says this. This is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to it, lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So you see what he's saying there? If you're a Christian and you're doing the things that God wants you to do, you have no reason to hide those things. No, bring them into the light that people could clearly see from your witness that they were done in God. It's the people of the darkness that hide their deeds from others because they know that they're evil. That's why there's so much evil that happens at night. Anybody work in a hospital? How crazy is it at night compared to the day? Crazy. You ever been in the ER? You go during the day, it's like, there ain't nobody there. You go at night, the place is packed out like they're having a concert or something. Evil hides underneath the cover of darkness. But you, as the light, even under the cover of night, shine Jesus to this world. For John says, the light came into the world. People love darkness rather than light. But in John 1, he says, the darkness will be overcome by the light. The light can't be overcome by darkness. The only thing that darkness actually is, is the absence of light. But when light is there, the darkness cannot be there. When the truth is there, the lie cannot be there. Because the truth is a light. Your word is a lamp unto my feet, David says in the Psalms. It's a lamp unto my feet. The truth is light. In Romans 3, Paul says, let God be true and let every man be a liar. Don't hold on to the things 
that you have taken as truth, which are actually lies, but instead give those things up for the actual truth that you can walk in the truth and by your witness, God would be made true. People are watching you, Christians. They want to know what you're going to do, how you live your life. If the God that you serve is actually different than everything else they've tried in the world. I'm one of those. Go out and try it all and see what sticks. Can I tell you, I've found that only God sticks. Only God actually works. Everything else will only lead you into more darkness. But God wants to pull you out of that darkness and into his glorious light. So how do you do that? How do you do that? How can you take the lies that you've accepted as truth in your life? And when you get to the scripture and you're reading through and you're like, hmm, it's okay, Holly, she doesn't bother me. Out of the mouth of babes comes the praise of the living God. When you get to a scripture that you don't like, that makes your stomach just get all tied up in knots. I've been there. And you're like, I don't like this one. I like the rest of it, but I don't like this one. In that moment, you have to understand that, that what's going on inside of you then is a fight between good and evil, between the truth and the lie. And the only way to get that lie out of you is to call it what it is, a lie. And you could say, that's a lie. I've said it out loud before. That's a lie. And I rebuke that lie in the name of Jesus Christ. And once that lie comes out of you, then you're opened up to receive truth into your spirit. Because you have to see your spirit, your heart like rooms. Once you fill a room with a lie, truth can't get in there anymore. But once you evict the lie, then the truth can come back in. That's what you have to do. You got to evict the lies in your life. Evict the lies in your heart. Come on, folks, we live in California. Just tell them it's too expensive. Like, I'm raising the rent on you. If you ain't the truth, you can't stay there no more. Tell the lie to get out of there and allow God's truth to overwhelm your life. Your heart will become something brand new, not tainted by the things of the world, but purified by the word of God to be holy and without blemish that you could walk in righteousness before him. Allow the Lord to come into your spirit right now. Just say, God, wash over me. Wash over, wash over us, God. Wash over us right now. Allow us to let go of all those lies. God, that we've received as truth that we can walk in the truth in you and be anointed to be your servants, your ministers here to a dark and dying world. That we wouldn't be people of the lie, but that we would be people who gloried in the truth. 2 Thessalonians 2, Paul is talking about the Antichrist coming to earth. And he says this, he says, the coming of the lawless one is according to the work of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish because they did not love the truth that they might be saved. So what he's saying is the enemy is going to come and he's going to do all these miraculous things in front of people. And they're going to be like, how could this not be the truth? How could this not be God? Because look at all these miracles he's doing. And yet God says, 
for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. He's saying that those who didn't love the truth enough to seek it out, because you know, if you're seeking the truth, you know what the enemy is going to look like. It says it right here. So if you're seeking the truth, you're going to know this. But those who didn't seek the truth, God is going to give them over into the lies that they desired, that they couldn't even believe the truth when it slaps them in the face. That's how important the truth is in each one of our lives. That you would be able to come out of the lie, step into the truth, and not be deceived by the spirit of the Antichrist who is even in the world today. God desires to set you free from that slavery. Anyone who believes a lie is a slave to the lie. But anyone who believes the truth is a freed man in Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for this time. Thank you for your truth. Thank you that because of your truth, no lie can be present in our lives. God, would you wash over us in truth? Would your living water come overflowing out of us, God, that we can know you wholly and completely, that we can not be in love with the things of the world, with the lusts of our flesh, but instead that we could be in love with you, God, and we can be in love with your truth, God. Would you use us as a witness to this dark and dying world, that we wouldn't be afraid of anything or anyone out there, but we would know that the darkness cannot overcome the light. The light will always prevail over darkness. God, we trust in you for these things and we look to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.